Hey everybody, today we're going to be making some custom dice inside of Blender. The tips and tools that I'm going to be showing you in this particular video will be helpful on any sort of polyhedral dice custom design that you're creating, but it's also helpful on just any sort of hard surface modeling that you're doing regarding using SVGs, images, stencils, and booleans to create some cutouts. So here you can see this is the actual final that we're going to be looking at in this particular project. So we have an SVG that we've used to create this carve in the top of the dice and in the bottom. And we have some numbers on all the sides, plus this really cool framing custom graphic on the outside and this neat speckled design here. So I'm going to be showing you how to do all that kind of stuff and the materials. Let's get started. So here we are inside of Blender. And as you can see, I have the key presses down here in the bottom left so you don't get lost. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to use this cube here and we're going to create some customized elements like numbers and stuff like that. So let's first start off by hiding that and we're going to add some text here. And when we take a look at this and we start to add our, you can see there I put a one but it looks like an I, so you can choose to have a different font if you like. And you could choose from all of these in here. I really like this Bauhaus one. I think it looks really, really cool. But it still looks like an eye, but that's fine. But you'll notice that the center of this object is actually right here instead of in the center of the number, which is going to be a problem. And I'll show you what that it is going to look like. But first, let's turn back on the cube. And you might be saying, OK, cool, like I'd like to put this onto the cube. And so you start like rotating it on the x axis and rotating it on z and stuff like that. But you'll notice that it kind of takes you some time and you have to like project it onto here. And also if you have something like, and I'm just going to show you, um, don't necessarily copy what I'm doing, but if you have something like this up here that has a whole bunch more sides, how can you project it onto that without having to angle it exactly according to whatever face it is that you're trying to match? And really what we want to do is first let's reset with Alt R. We're going to reset the rotation on the number that's down there. I'm going to right click, set origin to the geometry, and then Alt G, which will put it right in the center of the grid here. And we're going to use this up here. Now, for most of you who watch my videos, you'll know that I sometimes tell you to hold control and you can move it along a grid like this here. And that's because whenever you hold control, it actually changes the snap to function up here to whatever is listed right here. And if we turn that on, you'll see that it's going along the grid. And if I hold control, it sort of releases that snap to function. So what we want is to, let's uh, just hide that for right now. And we'll select the text and you'll see it's right there. And what we want to actually snap to is we want to snap to the face. So face project. Then we want to snap to the center. And then we want to align the rotation to the target. And right here where it says effect move, we also want to rotate. So affect the rotation. Then when we hit G, you'll see that it's moving the object to that face right there. And if we hit three and press G, you could see that it's going right in the center there and we can hit R from this point, hold control, and we can actually rotate it like this, or you can RX 90 degrees, and you could set it like that there. And now we have our one set where we want it to be. And from this point here, what we can basically do is we can go to the different sides and we can duplicate. So if I go over here, hit Shift D, I'm duplicating that and setting it on that axis. And you can go to the different views and make sure that this is aligned. And I will tell you, you should do that. I'm just going to quickly move this around and show you how you can address this. So if I go into Edit, I can place a 2 there, uh, Shift D to duplicate, move it right there, and put a 3, Shift D to duplicate there and so on, make a four, and so on where you could do the rest. Now, I'm only gonna do these few right now because what I wanna do is do a custom SVG graphic on the top and the bottom just to show you how you can do that. So what we really wanna do is we wanna set these in a generalized way to go in the middle of these planes, but I really want to add a custom border on the actual cube itself with a border graphic that I have. And we're gonna do a better job in centering this once we get that projected onto here. So you should have some numbers on the sides here and you can go ahead and do that for all of them if you'd like. But the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to UV unwrap this to have a border graphic on the outside. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the UV tab here, and you'll see that it goes automatically to the editing view. And if I hit tab, it goes out of edit mode. And if I hit tab again, it goes into edit mode. And you can see that it's already unwrapped into this fashion here. And this is very standard for a cube shape. You want to have it sort of made like this. And Blender is made with these general polygon objects to have these sort of unwrapped in an accurate way so that you can quickly project some things onto it. But we're going to change this up. So I'm going to take this here and I'm going to split this and hit N and T to hide these panels and change this one to the shader editor. And what we want to do is we want to add a custom graphic that I already have made. And if you don't have one available, you can go on to VecDeasy to get this image. I will provide a link down in the video description, or you can download this project file on my Gumroad, which will have the textures all put into that project file. So we're just going to add a texture here and we're going to go down to the image texture, place that here, and I'm going to search for that image, which is right here. And we're going to take that image and we're going to put that into the base color just to take a look at this. Or if you have Node Wrangler turned on, Control Shift, left click to look through this here. And we're going to change this to the material preview. And you can see that what it's done here, if I zoom out, the way that this is unwrapped, it's on this image like this. Now you could make this replicated in this cross pattern if you'd like, but what we really want to do is save some time here. So we're going to go into the plane select mode here or the face select mode. And we're going to hit U to unwrap. And you'll see there's all this stuff here. But what we want to do is change this to reset. And if we press reset, you can see there it made all of the planes into this right here, which basically makes it to where it covers the entire image. So that makes it a lot easier. Now, the problem here is that if I go into object mode and I add my bevel modifier, you can see that it's sort of wrapping this around in sort of a weird way that you may not like. So if we go into edit mode and we go on this side, if we select everything with A over here on the, in the viewport over here, and then on this side, hit A again to select everything, we can actually hit S to scale this up. And you're seeing that there's a replicated pattern going on here. Do you see that? And what we want to do is change this right here, which says frame square, change this from repeat to clip. And once we do that, we can actually control where that's located and we can scale this down and we can take the bevel here and just take a look at what that looks like. And what you might want to do is set your bevel where you want it to be. Maybe something like this here. I'm just going to do the one segment just so I can see where the bevel is. Go into edit mode and scale that up a bit like so. Maybe that's a little bit too much. So we'll bring it like this maybe and then increase the segments a little bit like that. And you can see now we have our custom border graphic on our dice perfectly set all there. Then what you can do is go to the layout tab up here, go into the material preview, and make sure that these are all set correctly in the middle of our cube, something like this. And it might depend on the shape, uh, I've done this quite a few times at this point, and it really sometimes depends on the uh, font that you use, where to place these letter forms or numbers to make sure that it's properly placed in the center. So go ahead and take some time to center that up in the middle of your custom graphic if you have one of these borders available. And then we will work on the SVG graphic that's going to go on the top and the bottom of this dice. So what we're going to do next here is we're going to add an SVG to this file. So we're going to turn off the cube, turn off some of these here, and I'm going to go to File, Import, SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics right here. And I have one that's called Black Skull Edit DJ. So I'm going to provide a link down below where you can find this. This is something that you can easily find online. But I had to edit it a little bit in Inkscape to fix a few things. So if you don't want to fix some stuff, you could just grab what I have in my Gumroad as a download, or you can create your own custom graphic or download it wherever you want. But I'm going to use this skull one right here. Now you can see that I have it set as one object. Sometimes if you just download it online, you might have a whole bunch of pieces and a lot of other stuff that you uh, might run into some issues with. For this one here, I basically took it and I created a custom image out of the SVG file so that it was a lot easier to import. And you can see that this is the center here, but it's over here. So I'm going to set the origin to the geometry, Alt-G to set it right back in the center, and there we go. Now, 
You can, if you'd like, duplicate this and make sure that you save some copies, but I'm just going to convert this over to a mesh. So once you have converted that to a mesh and you go into edit mode, you'll see that there is a lot of tries that are in here. Now you could do some other methods to make this a little bit easier and you could go in, select a few of these lines or a lot of them and dissolve these with control X in areas that you think you can get away with that. But for the purposes of this particular video, I think this might work just fine. So let's go into the edit mode here. And what we always wanna do is make sure that you can select all of these once you've converted to a mesh. Make sure that you merge by distance all of the vertices because there might be some that are right next to each other. You can see right there, removed eight vertices. So you might wanna make sure you do that before you do the next part here, which is to extrude this out. So we're going to create a little bit of depth. So if we press A to select all E, and then you can see there it's on the Z axis. Now, whoops, we have, because uh, this is turned on up here, we could turn that off. That's why you got that weird little pop there. We can move this down on the Z axis to make a little bit of depth there. And what we'll wanna do also is right click and then auto smooth just so that we can have a smooth edge around our SVG object. So let's turn back on the cube and you can see it's really small, that's okay. We're going to turn back on our snap up here and press seven to go to the top and then press G and we have it set right on the top there and then we can scale it up like this. So don't worry about some of that, that's just some shadowing that's having some weird effect because of the fact that this is a uh, right on the top and it has a lot of those lines in there. So that's why you're seeing some of that. But if we just move this up on the, whoops, let's turn off the snap, move this up on the Z axis just a little bit. And you can see that that resolves some of that weird stuff that we were seeing, okay? Now a really quick way that you can actually move this to the bottom of the cube is if we go here to our modifiers and we add a mirror like this here. And then for the mirror object, instead of just leaving it itself, we're going to select this cube and then we're gonna select the Z axis and now we have a skull on the bottom. So now when we move this around to center this object, we can put it right in the middle on the top and the bottom at the same time. Then we can apply that and now we have a solid object. Now you could go into edit mode, select all with A, see that right there, press P, which will separate by loose parts. And oh, it looks like the jaw and the top here are separate. So we'll just press Control J after we select those two. And at the bottom here, we'll select these two here and press Control J. And now we have this area up here and this area down here that are two separate OBJs. Pretty cool. Let's turn on the text here on all the sides. Select these like this. And provided that you have centered these objects, we can right click and we can convert these to a mesh. And what's really cool is with all of these selected, we can go into edit mode with tab, press A, and then we can actually scale this out away a little bit from the cube with Alt S. You can see there it's scaling away based on its normals. I'm gonna right click to set it back where it was. And we're just gonna go to wireframe so I could show you this next part here. We're gonna extrude this and we're gonna pull it in because we're gonna use these as booleans for the cube. So if we E to extrude, right click, and then Alt S to scale, and I'm gonna hold shift, we can actually scale this in like this into the cube. And you can see here, we can go inside of our cube like this by zooming in, Alt S, and then scale that up just to be like that there. And I think that will work out just fine. Now be careful, sometimes what happens when you do this, you might have a particular text or font that has a weird scaling that might happen where a part of your bevel or something like that gets a little bit offset. So what you could do is just select all the faces of that particular area and if you see anything weird happening, scale on that particular axis like Y and then zero and then enter and that will make it to where they're all flat again if you ever find that that's going on. So next what we're gonna do here is we're actually going to make a Boolean out of all of these objects here. And I do recommend that when you are doing Booleans that you make sure that you save often because sometimes some things can go wrong. But we also want to duplicate some of our things before we convert them. 
or uh, before we fully make them into a Boolean operation because we don't want to accidentally delete any objects that we might want to go back and reuse. So let's duplicate all of these, right click, and I'm going to move these to a new collection called Boolean Save. And depending on how many different dice you're making, you might have a few different saves. So you can see here that we have a Boolean save. And what we can then do is turn that off. And we can select these again here. And we're going to move these into another collection. So M to move, new collection. And we're going to call this Boolean. You can call this operation or conversion. Whatever you want to do, you can call it whatever you like. Then what we're going to do here is we're going to select this object. And you can see here that we had the black skull edit in its own collection. I'm just going to delete this hierarchy here. What we can do now is we can add a Boolean. See that right there, a Boolean operation. And instead of an object, we're going to change this to a collection because we're going to do this all at once. And then we're going to say we're going to set this to Boolean operation. Now, the problem here is that we have this text that's not converted to a mesh. So what we might want to do before we even do that, let's turn that off real quick. Let's select all of our text right here for the Boolean operation. Right click, convert this to a mesh, go into edit mode with tab press one so that we have the vertex select, A for all, merge by distance, and make sure that there's no issues there. So now when we turn this on, it might take a little bit of a second there, but we can turn that on. And then when we turn off the Boolean operation here for viewing, you should be able to see something happen. And if you don't change the solver down here to fast, or if it was set to fast, you can change it to exact, and you should be able to see something like this. So what we can do here is we can right click and then we can shade auto smooth. And then that will deal with some of that weird shading that you saw on the top and the bottom where the skulls were. And a lot of that has to do with the triangulation, but you can see how the auto smoothing solved some of those weird issues. And when we go to a material preview, you can see that we have all of these things kind of set like that. And when we have these set where we want them to be, we can actually apply this Boolean. Now you can see there when we applied the Boolean, a weird thing happened with the bevel, and that has to do with the fact that it's set to edges right now. What we want to actually do is change where the bevel is going on by going into edit mode, selecting all of these edges here, like that, press N, go to item, and then change the mean bevel weight to a one, and then here change the limit method to weight. Then we can get our bevel back and it looks awesome. Now at any point, if you want to edit some of the stuff here, as far as the depth of your letters or your numbers or your icons that you've cut into your dice, you can go into edit mode and this is how you can do this. If we go to three to select the faces here, just select one face from each of these sides like this. Then we can press F3 and then type in select similar and then go to coplanar. And then that will bring this up right here where you can change the threshold. So depending on where it is, you might have to increase or decrease the threshold to make sure that all of those are selected. And then you could press Alt S to scale in or out the depth of those specific areas, just like this here. Okay, so that's how you can handle that. So at this point, you should have the SVG, if you have a custom SVG in your dice, and you should have some numbers or something like that all the way around. And this applies to a different type of polygon. So if you have this set up here to snap to the face, if we were to add something like, let's say I'm just going to do a circle here, and then we press G, you can see there that it's projecting to that face, and you can scale that in and move that around depending on the face that's there. So if you're doing a whole bunch like a D20 or something like that, that's how you want to set that. All right, so next here, what we're gonna do is we're going to be creating some materials for this. So let's go over here. And I just want to point out that we already have this material right here. And we're gonna actually use, you know what? We're not gonna use this shading tab because I actually don't like how it's set up. I think that it's a lot easier for me to show you stuff when it's side by side other than the vertical panel that's in the shading here. It's just old habits die hard. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it this way. So over here on the left, we're going to put this as a material preview. And then on the right over here, we're gonna change this to the shader editor here. And you can see that we're looking through the frame square PNG that we have right here. So make sure, especially now that you have the 
Node Wrangler add-on enabled, so just go up to Edit Preferences and then look for that add-on called Node Wrangler. And make sure that that's on. Always use that. It's great. What we want to do is we actually want to make the areas that we cut out of our object into a independent material. So we're going to press Tab here, and I'm going to go to Solid View, and I'm going to select those faces, just one face from each of these sections, just like that. We're going to press F3, make sure that you select similar, or you can press Chef G to open up the panel for the hotkey there. Select coplanar, and make sure that you select the correct faces there. And then we're going to go over here, and we're actually going to add a new material slot. Press new, and we're going to call this numbers. You can call it whatever you want. That's what I'm calling it. And then for this one, we're going to call this base. If we go to the numbers one and we assign that, we should have and go into uh, edit view here, we can see that now, or not edit view, but object mode, we can actually see that we have two different materials. We have this white one, and then we have this base one here, like this. So what we wanna do is we wanna start to use this frame square here, because we're gonna work on the base one first. We're gonna look through this alpha channel. You can see that for the one that I created, there's this alpha channel here but there's no color information really except for this outline. So we don't really wanna use that color information. We're gonna use the alpha channel in this. Yours might be a little bit different, but this is how I designed this one. Add a mix color node, and we're gonna take the alpha output and put that into the factor here. And if we view through that, change two of these colors, you could see that this is becoming this color and the rest of it's becoming this one. And it's using this alpha as a way to decide which colors are being used here. And we could take that, put that into the base color, take a look through that, and now we have two different colors that are being displayed on here. And I'm actually gonna change this to a white, and I'm gonna keep this as something like this, just for something that we're gonna do in the future. But this idea is basically how you can really do a lot of custom materials without having to do a whole lot of work. If you take color information, you can create stencils and use that to project different types of materials here with the principled BSDF. So we can actually use this alpha channel to control things like the specularity, the metallic, the clear coat, the transmission, the normal, and all that kind of stuff. So what we'll do now is I'm just going to use it to create a different roughness. And instead of using this color mix node, I'm going to use a converter color ramp, take the alpha, put it through here, and I'm going to make the this one here a different color, so let's keep that rough. And then the stenciled area, the border outline, I'm gonna keep that as black, because if I put that into the roughness here, it's going to make the this one right here more shiny, and the base part, it's gonna be more rough. And if I change this to a different color, you can see that it's displaying or this type of roughness here. And if I were to take this white one here and move this down, you could see that it's getting shinier. And if I take this one here and I move this to a white, it got more rough, even though as a, a this particular color, it's a little bit harder to tell. So that's how we can control the roughness there. I'm gonna reverse these back because I want this to be like this here. And we can also use that to decide which is going to be in this metallic here. So we could take the alpha channel and there really is only metallic and non-metallic, so you don't want there to be a gray value in between. It should be a one or a zero situation, so you can actually take the alpha and plug that directly into the metallic, but we're just gonna put this like this here. And you can see that I have a metal for this part, and then this part right here is a non-metal. So let's reverse these. And now we have a metal here, and then we have a non-metal here, so that's pretty cool. Another thing that we can do is we can take this same thing right here, and we can take the alpha, put it in here, and then we can change the transmission. So we could take this and put it into the transmission, and now we have, if we were to swap these around, the white will be the transmission or glass material, and the black, that's going to be the non-transmission, so that's kind of the metallic that we have there. Look through the BSDF, and now you can see that we have a glass. And to make this a little bit more apparent, I'm just going to switch this over from EV to Cycles because it tends to look a lot better. And look at this with the rendered view. And up here, I'm going to change the shading up here to turn these off. So we could just get a nice little preview and change my device to the GPU since it's faster. So you can see there, we have a really cool glass there, and we can control how 
clear that glass is by changing the roughness value here. And you can change the transmission material to swap these around if you want, or you can use these as kind of like switches to go in between these different types of materials here. And it's fun just to play with using this alpha channel and moving that around. The next thing that we could do here is we can add a vector bump where the alpha channel can go into the height right here. And you could take that normal map and put that directly into here. And that's going to create a little bit of a height displacement, at least visually for us. And we can invert that to make it look like it's actually etched down into our object. We can look through there and you can see that the normal is making it look like this. Now, sometimes a straight alpha channel can look a little bit weird and you might need to use a color ramp on this side to control the sort of like the softening of some of these edges. So sometimes what I like to do is throw that into one of these color ramps and you can sort of see if we zoom in really, really close here, the edge here, I'm changing that edge to be a little bit softer or to be a little bit sharper, depending on what you kind of want it to be. And then pumping that into the bump map, which it looks like we actually inverted this. So you can swap these around or just turn off the invert. And then we can look through it there. And it should be a little bit softer as far as the etching on there. And it looks a little bit better, I think, from that view there. And when you add more lighting and stuff like that, it will be a little bit more apparent that you have that depth that's going into your object using that as a stencil. Another thing that we can do is we can actually use some different materials and mix it together or different textures and mix them together. You can use image textures and you can use procedurals. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you a way to use, if you add a texture here and we're gonna to go to Voronoi, we're going to add a little bit of a speckled texture in here. So if we look through here where it says distance, and if you move the random down, you can actually make a grid pattern out of this, but let's turn the randomness up and let's turn the scale way up something like this, okay? You can see that there's a lot of little dots all over the place. So what we can do is we can take this into a converter color ramp, take the distance, put it into here, and then we can isolate specific sections like this. And let's say that I wanted to make this a gold flecked sort of uh, outside here to, mimic the same, the same material that we have as this inset right here. Maybe I want to do that with these little flecks, okay? So I can control that here and I can control the scaling of what that looks like here. And then we can actually mix this and this one together to create some different materials into all these color ramps that we created here. So what we'll wanna do is we'll want to add a color mix node We'll put that up here, take that, put it into here, take this one and put it into here. And what we wanna do is look through this mix node and instead of a mix that the factor is gonna go between one or the other, what we wanna do is we actually want to invert this because we want the white, we don't want the black. So let's actually invert this, something like this here. And then with this color mix node, let's take this and make this into an add. You can either add or screen, add or screen, and then move that factor all the way up to a one. And then you can take that and pipe that into all of these. So if we just take a look really quick, we should see this. You can see that there's the different color there and then take that and move it into all of these. And when we do that, we should see that same material and you know what, for fun, let's also put this into this down here. And when we look through there, you can see that now we have this gold flecked sort of pattern going across the entire object. And if you feel like you just want it to be sort of flecked and not it be sort of inset like it is right now, because remember this right here is going into our bump. You can actually take this and put this into this one right here so that the flecking or the gold sort of outer uh, section like that won't be sort of like stuck into the dice, but only this area right here will be etched into or like, you know, depressed into the surface of that material. And you can see that we have a really cool looking little gold material and maybe we don't actually want this to be a transmission. So we can remove that, change this to a, I don't know, darker red or something like that. And then change the roughness here to something a little bit more like this here. And now we have an interesting 
customized dice. Now the next part is going to be relatively simple as far as the numbers is concerned. We can just simply change this to a different color, move the roughness, add some, let's say we wanted this to be a gold metal or something like this, um, add a little bit of roughness, maybe add some anisotropic uh, roughness to that, which will add this sort of like fun little uh, stretching of the light and bending of the light like this right here. And we get an interesting gold and red flecked dice here. Now, one last thing that I want to show you guys before we wrap this up is that instead of actually making this destructive by adding that bevel ourselves or going in and adding a uh, bevel amount to the edges of this thing using a modifier, we're actually going to use a very, very cool shading technique inside of Blender, at least using cycles. This does not work in Eevee. And we're going to add, if you search here for bevel, there is a normal here. And if we look through there, we could take a look and you could see there is a bevel that's being created as a normal for our object. And if we take that normal and we move it into here, now keep in mind, those of you who do not have a really, really fast computer, when you do this for the first time, it does have to build a couple files when you use this. And you'll see up here that it might tell you like that it's building that particular file. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you do it. But now if we are to look at our edges here, take this strength, turn it off, and then turn it back on, you should be able to see a difference in how the bevel is being handled. And we can control the radius here by making this larger or smaller, like this right there. And when we look through here, we should be able to see that those edges are not as obvious as they were before. And you can add a number of these samples here to make it either more pronounced, that bevel shape there, and you can control the radius to make it whatever size you think is gonna work for your particular object. Now there is one thing that you might notice and that might be that some of this beveling might not look exactly correct. And one way to fix that, you can see there's this weird sort of hump here. If I go into edit mode, select all, go up to mesh, normals, recalculate outside, press tab, you can see that it resolved that issue there. So now we have a really nice little bevel shape to the edges of all of these cut shapes here. And it looks really nice. And when you go to render this out, for your final it should look really cool now as you can see in this example scene that i have right here i have quite a few different things going on i have this material right here that if i isolate this out you can see that it's a metallic it has some interesting little scratches and stuff on it but it basically uses the same idea that i showed you we have the different designs that are pushed inside or carved out of the dice here we have some different materials that i have created using images and some textures that are generated inside of here with procedural textures. So if we just set, sort of like, you know, peruse through here, it's pretty much the exact same idea. It's just presented a little bit differently. You can see here that I have a sort of like writing on the outside corners of each part of this D20. And the, the 20 is the elder sign. And then on the other side, there's a, well, it's a little bit hard to see here, but there's a uh, little... Cthulhu right there, which is the one. So that's a critical failure. So Cthulhu will come and get you if you get a critical failure on this dice. So there's a lot of options when it comes to using this method and creating different types of materials and making stuff look a little bit more interesting and cool. Here's one that I kind of got from the, or at least the idea is kind of from the Blood Bowl team manager the card game, I think it is, a uh, dice set where there's these little skulls and these little like pow signs and stuff like that. So there's all sorts of interesting things that you can do. You can make them a little bit more simplified or a little bit more interesting and detailed depending on what it is that you're trying to portray in your game or if you're a dice creator yourself and you want to experiment with some different stuff. There's all sorts of ways to use the methods that I just showed you to create this more interesting set of dice. So hopefully you're able to follow along with me and create this really cool little custom dice here and that you are also inspired to create your own custom dice. Please check out the info section on my YouTube channel page 
where I have all of my handles for social media and tag me in any custom dice that you create from this video. It'd be really awesome to see what you guys are making out there. Thanks so much to all of you for watching and to all of my subscribers and especially to my Patreon community. You guys are all awesome. If you're interested in supporting what I do and supporting this channel, please consider becoming a patron. The link is down in the video description. And I will see you all next time on DJ Tutorials.